Hoop fans, coming up shortly, we'll see the Utah Jazz squaring off against the Hawks in Atlanta. Well, for Atlanta, 5-5 five and five over their last 10 games, but they're not satisfied with 500 ball. Looking to tack one onto the win tally tonight. And we'll watch Trey Young, the fifth overall pick in 2018. Shaq, watching the games, it's like he's been given the green light. No, Ernie, let me rephrase you on that. The triple green light, Kenny knows what I'm talking about. That's when the coaches encourage you to shoot, even if you keep missing. Must be nice. Is there such thing as a triple green light? Well, his triple green light is like a freeway. It's just you can do 90 miles an hour and no one's going to stop you. He takes shots that would have gotten people benched back in the day. You know, this is one of the areas where the game has changed the most. It's not free where it's Autobahn. I used to live Ooh, in Ooh, Autobahn. Yeah, exactly. Autobahn. You go 90 miles an hour, Sheriff O'Neill will pull you over. That's right. Woo, woo. L- what, would you, what would you do to Kenny if you pulled him L- over? License and registration, please. Yes, officer. You got it. It's NBA basketball on 2K Sports. I'm glad you could join us on this exciting Friday night matchup. In this game, we'll see the Atlanta Hawks going up against the Utah Jams. Along with Steve Smith and Greg Anthony, this is Kevin Harlan. And our friend on the sideline, Hall of Famer David Aldridge, who we'll be hearing from shortly. Hey, Dave. In the last few years, we've seen league-wide scoring surge in the NBA. Now, many credit years of defensive rules changes, such as limiting hand checking on and off the ball and getting rid of contact in the paint. Now, everyone isn't pleased with these changes. Some say defense is no longer allowed. But a higher pace of play, more efficient shot selection, and lots of threes also play a role. Most fans aren't complaining. Kevin? It sure is fun to watch, DA. Thank you. Now that we have a second, let's take a quick peek at the rebounding numbers for the last handful of seasons for Capella. On the boards, he's been a much bigger presence these last few years than he had been prior. And he can be counted on now to make an impact with his rebounding. And that's a product of all the work he's put in down low. And checking out Utah's opening lineup, Conley and Mitchell, the talented backcourt pair. Inside, we have Ingles and Gobert. And it's O'Neal in at the small forward. And for the Hawks, Herter the two with Hunter at the three. John Collins is out there with Clint Capella, and it's Young in at the one. Steve, tonight we have a great matchup at the center spot. Talk about how that position has evolved over the last couple of years. I think because of the rules, Kevin, um, there's not a lot of space when guys are posting up because of the defensive rules right now. You can sit in a post guy's lap, especially if he's dominant. So I think guys, as a post player now, saying I got to go out to the three-point line, I got to go out to the free throw line to be able to have some spacing to make shots. Pass to Herter. Knocks it loose. Up top, Capella. Fouled on the shot and picks up two points. So one free throw coming up. Beautiful location on the pass, as usual. Led his man perfectly. The Hawks shooting their first free throw of the game right now. Yeah, looking over their percentage on the season, I think they will be thrilled with the number in terms of their free throw percentage, 79. Jazz on offense. It's a three-point game. O'Neal passes to Conley. Rebounded by the Hawks. Now Capella. Young outside. Good for the basket. Starting off one for one with that shot. He's fearless. Trey Young knows he's probably going to take contact, and it doesn't matter at all. Conley kicks to Mitchell. Got a piece of it. Last break here. Here come the Hawks. Here's Herter. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Jazz will take it. Jazz. It's Gobert with the ball for the Utah Jazz. They come into this one following a loss to the Thunder. Mitchell outside. 
Rebounded by Capella. The defense is right there. Quality contest, and they threw him off his rhythm. Here's Young, and it's sent back by Mitchell. This is the elite defense Mitchell provides, and you've got to love how he competes. And the basket by Ingles. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Wow, that's a defensive breakdown. Can't do that against good scores. Here's Herter. There's three pointers off the mark. And I think that one could have easily have fallen for him. And the basket by Ingles. This is what Ingles gives you. Good size in the backcourt. High energy and unbelievable touch from range. Outside Cullen. Pass to Hunter. Now here's Capella. Just five on the clock. And there's the foul. It'll go on Joe Ingles. That'll be his second foul of the game. The question is, do you leave him in? Obviously, you don't want him to pick up a third foul this early. George Niang, he's checked in for the Jazz. First quarter of basketball, just over two and a half minutes play. And the dunk by Capella. Explosive leaping ability allows him to play the five, even though he's a little undersized. Outside Conley. Here's Niang. It's good. He makes his first shot of the game. For Atlanta, they've gone 50% from the field, hitting three of six since the opening tip. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Michael Conley. That's his first foul. Here's Capella. Five points in the game. In the corner, it's Hunter. Here is Young, six on the shot clock. High, arcing shot. You really have to be careful with Gobert lurking around. He'll send it back. And first quarter, we're about three and a half minutes in. Capella with the bucket. And so it's Mitchell who brings up the ball for the Utah Jazz, trailing by two. Here's Gobert. That one, no good. Good work defensively by Capella. They may not get the spotlight, but the Utah Jazz are one of the best run teams in the NBA. They're run as a legacy trust. That means every dime of profit goes back into the team. I mean, all period, it's been a struggle for him scoring the ball. Gobert, the pass to Conley. He gets that one. Well, this is where Conley operates best naturally, in the paint, creating for others or himself. Steve, you were talking about the reinvestment for the Jams. An upgraded arena, new practice facility. Necessary moves, you know this, to stay competitive. The Jazz fans love their team, and they're showing that commitment in return. Ed Davis has checked in for Rudy Gobert. Bella inside is guarded by Davis. Great tee that time from Davis. Here's Niang. And he could not get that one to go. Out of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. That one on Cullen. Steve, we know it's a long season for the players, but talk about the coaches. Kevin, you've seen it. Those coaches that are on a hot seat, they have those bags under their eyes, they'll sleep. Those coaches <laughs> that have a long contract and they're winning, Shoot two. they're pretty good. And I think the coaches that sleep well is the coaches that have teams that they know that kind of run themselves. And the free throw is good, now leading by one. And when you think about some of the most entertaining Hawks teams, my mind always goes to the human highlight film. Reason why he was a nine-time All-Star, NBA scoring champion, has some legendary matchups against Larry Bird and Chuck Person, to name a few. One of the most electrifying players in the history of the game. And, and Smitty, as tough as they are on D, the Jazz have been middle of the pack offensively. How do they improve there? You know, GA, they can be a top 10 offense. The two things that held them back are turnovers and four free throw shooting. Conley kicks to Niang. And it's Conley penetrating. That's basket number two with his third shot off to a fast two for three. Mike Conley with a terrific field in the pick and roll. He's like a quarterback going through his progressions. Pretty early. 
to be over the limit. That foul situation is something we want to keep an eye on. The Hawks shooting their second and third shots at the line right here. And the first one at the line is good. This is year two for Lloyd Pierce as an NBA head coach. Still in his early 40s, the Hawks, the perfect opportunity for him to grow and develop alongside his players. Now, here's Mitchell. 11 points for him in that last game against the Thunder in Oklahoma City. And there's the call on John Collins. That's foul number two for him. Reddish, he's checked in for Collins. And the Jazz with possession here. O'Neal passes to Davis. Six to shoot. Back to O'Neal. From past the arc. One up, one down. Two points with his first shot this game. And Coach Pierce works as an assistant general manager in the offseason. Steve able to learn that side of things and have a voice in acquisition. That's very important. They are building something special in Atlanta. He's going to play a big role in that as well. Mono, he mono. This is where it can get a little personal. Sometimes it's a matter of pride. Answering back with a three of his own. A little artistry in the painted area converting against the size. Proving once again that when you attack with confidence, good things tend to happen. The Jazz have had two chances at the line already, making them both. Vince Carter, who's checked in for Kevin Herter. And a switcher also for Utah. Clarkson's checked in. And at 6-3, Donovan Mitchell able to play shooting guard or point guard. Spenny, what do you think is his best position? You know, Kevin, he will tell you he can do both. Versatile enough to play and defend multiple positions, but I like him at the two-guard position. In this period, they're feeding him, and he's feeling it. Knocked loose, and it's blocked. Carter kicks to Reddish. Carter outside. Now the pass to Young. Let's it go from deep. Another three for Atlanta. Their third three-pointer in a row. Utah has gone two of two from three-point range here in the first quarter. Here's Mitchell and block. That one goes careening off the glass. Capella dishes to Reddish. Back to Capella. He kicks it to Hunter. Fadeaway. A shot by Reddish. No good. Went to the fadeaway. Didn't need to, though. Probably cost him some points. Clarkson passes to Davis. Mitchell outside. Conley against Carter. And it's sent back by Carter. Capella, high post. That shot off the mark. Good D by Mitchell. Out of bounds. It'll go to the Hawks. Shooting at a high percentage. All teams aim to do that. Let's see the league's best. The fourth spot held by the Jams. So patient on the offensive end. I mean, they're not going to force shots, and it's that selectiveness that's yielded such an impressive field goal percentage. Young finds Capella. Here's Reddish. And Davis sends it back. And he gets it back. Carter inside the three-point line. He clangs that one off the back iron. And down it falls. Few people see the floor as well as Trey. If you're open, we'll find you. Timeout is called. First of the game for the Jams. A many of recent players to enter the league. Which had rookie seasons that surprised you? I think Donovan Mitchell. The way he came out of the gate. Uh, I knew Luka Doncic was good, but because I hadn't seen much film or seen him live, he surprised me. Trey Young, the way he's played from a small guard position, those are some of the guys that have surprised me. Some were high drive picks, and some were a little bit lower, but those are the three.
making some changes. Wayne Dedman's checked in for Clint Capella. DeAndre Bembry comes in for Hunter. And it's Teagan for Young. Moutier, he's checked in for the Jazz. Over in the corner, Reddish. No good on the triple. Jazz trail by four. Mitchell passes to Clarkson. Dedman with the block. The 7-4 wingspan of Dedman. Hard to get your shot over that. Great timing. That can be the difference between an assist and a turnover. And so it's Moutier with it. He'll bring it up for the Jazz. Davis kicks to Mitchell. There's the steal. Here's Bembry. Oh, he blocked it and deflects off the backboard. Clarkson passes to Moutier. Now Mitchell. Looking to end the run. A shot off that time. Good work defensively by Carter. Pass to T. And denied. He sends it right off the glass. Jazz trail by six. Clarkson passes to Davis. Clarkson surveying the floor. And he uses both hands to jam it in. Uh, okay, two hands for safety. That's that's what they say, right? Uh, that's right. He was ultra safe with that dunk, no question. Carter dishes to Reddish. With some arc, and the layup is up and in. And the Hawks lead by six. Man, I'll tell you, when you get your floater game going, it's a tremendous weapon. Davis kicks to Clarkson. We are going to remember that one oh, for a while. I know I will, Greg. That, that was special. That was really special. Here's Rex. And Davis sends it back. Over in the corner, Moutier. And there's another one for the Jans. Land has gone 3 of 6, 50% from deep so far tonight. Here's Reddish, and that one good. Excellent pass from Detman. This is what you're asking your guys to do. Be aggressive, trust one another, and make plays for each other. This is the shot you want right at the rim. He just couldn't deliver. And here is Teague looking at his point production. He averages almost 11 points a game. From deep, and it is good at the buzzer. Big time shot to beat the buzzer there. My goodness. He had to rush that one a little, but terrific stroke from range. And so it's the Atlanta Hawks bringing the quarter to a close with a seven-point lead. They're pounding the ball inside, and that's where they've gotten their best production tonight. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. A unique upbringing for Clint Capella. Spent years in a welfare orphanage in Switzerland. He said he never imagined he'd come this far. Just an inspiring story, Greg. It gives you perspective on why you should be grateful for everything you have. Kevin, without a doubt, Capella's upbringing helped shape him, and, and the hard work he continues to put in is really admirable. Oh, yeah. And hope you've enjoyed the broadcast so far. Halfway through the first half in this one. And what do you guys think about the Hawks here in this one? I mean, offensively, I thought they did a good job of protecting the ball. And defensively, boy, were they disrupted. Winning the turnover battle here early on. And you see that reflected in the score. And a chance here presented by Gatorade to see who's on the floor. All fueled up and ready to go for the start of the second quarter. And so in the game for the Hawks. We've got Dwayne Dead, Embry out there with T, and there's Clark. And it's Fernando in at the four slot. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Kevin, when Trey Young was in college, he was known for his long range shooting. But Young says, the people who know me best know that I'd rather get an assist than any other stat. I pride myself on making the right play. Knowing your teammates get joy and excitement from playing with you is all I care about. Kevin? That's great to see. Thank you, D.A. It's Gobert with the ball for the jam. 
four-point game. You look at the Hawks franchise, moved to Atlanta in 1956. Since then, they've been unable to advance to the NBA Finals. And it's blocked. They recover, and the ball goes out of bounds. Last nice touch by Engel. As we get a break in the action now, let's take a look at the East and how the teams are stacking up. Taking a look at Atlanta, it's been a rough season for them. The good news is the lottery is only a couple months away. And I think for the Hawks, they're going to stumble towards the finish line this season with the playoffs nowhere near a possibility. All the talk around them now is already about what's going to take place in the offseason. Who's going to go? Who's going to stay? I'd be surprised if they don't have a much different look next year. And it's Carter missing. Now with Atlanta, I think they wanted a fresh start a couple years ago, Steve, rather than be a middle-of-the-back team. Yeah, and a primary way to acquire stars is to reboot, dump salary, and nail your draft picks. Then, once you have the young nucleus in place, you add the veterans. A defense unto himself. Rudy Gobert regarded by his team as the Utah Jazz version of Bill Russell. And the Hawks making a change here. Herter's checked in. What's up? And Smitty, the standing reach of Gobert, nine foot seven inches. He's around the rim before he leaves his feet. Yes, Kevin, the most efficient shots in basketball are dunks and layups. And he makes them hard to come by. Oh, and he went for the two-hander on the slam using some muscle. Some urgency from him there. Sure. Here's Clarkson. It's blocked. Here's Hurt, guarded by O'Neal. To the inside. Fernando, the pass to Teague. Nice ball movement here by Atlanta. Five on the clock. Here's Bembry. He can't get that one. And Utah the other way now. Following this one, they get to host the Pelicans. And that's the first game in a string of three straight at home. Excellent feel and timing. Collins does a good job of protecting the rim. Now, here is O'Neal. He's guarded closely. Five to shoot. Knocked away. Fast break for Hawks. There's Benbury. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. That's his first foul. He's getting his first free throw attempt of the night right now. And he makes the first. When Gordon Hayward left the Jazz three summers ago, some expected a rebuild. Instead, they hit gold with Donovan Mitchell and kept on trucking. And he can't hit the second. And the heartbreak over losing Hayward. Short-lived. But the Jazz still needed to learn from it. Very important that the Jazz retain the stars they developed. I think there were some lessons learned along the way. Hunters checked in for the Hawks. And a little under three and a half minutes elapsed in the second quarter of play. Here's Teague. Count that as his fourth basket of the night. Just seven shots to get there. Playing at his tempo, his pace, he's been dialed in all night. Ingles dishes to Moody. Rejected by T. And who would have thought it would be T to send that shot away? Great block. And they're forcing the ball inside, and it's working like a charm. You know, Smitty, NBA referees officials now have a presence on social media that's aiming at educating fans on calls and why they're made. Yes, and I love it, Kevin, if you have these demos and talk about plays and games and situations that you're educating fans. It's just that fans look at it when these referees who are human miss calls and then they want to reshow these plays that they miss. We still got to understand they're human and they're going to miss some calls. Well said, Steve. A shot by Clarkson, no good. The Hawks leading by nine. Young outside. 
It's stolen by Ingles. Conley against Young. Conley kicks to Clarkson. Gobert the pass to Conley. Shot clock at six. They could use a bucket. Goes back up. Gobert can't hit. He is so good attacking the rim. It's rare to see him denied like that. And that one drops. And this has been a great job of just getting into the middle of that defense and really scoring timeout, effectively timeout. from the paint. And the Jazz call time here. And plenty of Hawks fans were despondent when the team decided to rebuild. But that dejection has turned into excitement. The team plays hard every night. They have an entertaining style, and they have a lot of young talent. It may not be long before they're a real threat in the East. showed up every night and some noteworthy performances over the last month. He's averaging 15 points a game, five assists, and three rebounds. Yeah, he's been making the right decisions and, and letting the game come to him. Solid play all around. He's not trying to take over necessarily. He's just taking what the defense allows and contributing to the cause. A shot is good, scores his third basket in six tries, shooting 50%. And with that basket, he's able to end a 10-0 run by the Hawks. Here's Young, and the Hawks getting another basket right there. This kid knows when to shoot, when to drive, and when to kick. Trey Young has been out of this world tonight. And here's Conley outside. Gets the three-pointer to fall. Conley's got nine. Now that's a high percentage look when the D doesn't fight over the screen. The reason why it takes extra energy to do it. You have to trust your defensive rotations, but it's worth it. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the content. The Jazz have been solid at the line so far. Four for four. And taking a look at the numbers on the season, they've converted about 77% of those foul shots. Shooting two. No good on that. The one thing you can say about the Hawks, they have drafted well over the past few seasons. Stole John Collins at pick 19, traded back for Trey Young, and the Herder selection. The rebuild may not be long in Atlanta. Clint Capella, he's checked in for the Hawks. And the second free throw, good. And Steve, the Hawks not only identify talent, they identify guys who will excel in their established system. And that system is finding value with shooters. They also look for guys who bring the energy and also bring the effort. The size of the player isn't as important as the heart. Here's Conley following the basket by Trey Young. Here's Gobert. Connects on the 17-footer. Gobert's got five points in the quarter. Hey, let's give Rudy Gobert some credit for putting in the work. He can now hit the mid-range jumper. Young's shot is off. Jazz trail by seven. Down low. Deflects the pass. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Jazz will retain possession. You love the pressure he's putting on them. Almost had that steal. Fantastic anticipation. He has active hands. Even though he doesn't come away with the turnover, he's disrupting their offensive flow. Reddish, he's checked in for Kevin Herter. And Utah also making a switch. Donovan Mitchell's checked in for Clarkson. Reddish dishes to Hunter. Great pass to set up the lay-in. Hunter's got his third basket of the night right there. Utah has gone two or three when they've stepped beyond the arc in the second quarter. Mitchell finds Gobert. Outside Conley. And Capella sends it back. Here's Reddish. Rudy Gobert with the rebound. And so Gobert will bring it up for the Jazz. They trail by nine points. And even three-on-three -three break. 
Capella, the pass to Reddish. Back to Capella. That's in, and that's his fourth basket of the night. He's taken seven shots, a solid 57%. Yeah, that was the third straight high percentage look the defense has allowed. The, the defenders have got to start putting bodies on bodies. Conley into the lane. Count that one. Conley's got seven points here in this quarter. No, he left them frozen. The quick move by Mike Conley. Beautiful. Conley against Young. Shoots. Rudy Gobert with the rebound. Gobert's got 11 rebounds in the game. Conley the pass to Gobert. Dishes it to Mitchell. Lock at six. Kicks it to O'Neal. From outside the arc, he can't get that one to fall. And Atlanta will come the other way. A tough loss coming against New York in their last game play. And let's see, guys, if that triggers another little explosion from him after hitting three triples in that first quarter. Conley softly drops in the floater. Conley's got 13 points. And this team's struggles are not his fault. He's putting in work at the offensive end. Here's Young in for another field goal. A sublime 9 of 14 on the night. You know, defensively, you try to do everything possible to get a hand up on Young's shot, but he just ignores the contact and plays through it. Young with the steal. And Reddish with the slam. Playing with high energy, outworking the defense up the floor. And I just love it when the fast break results in a high percentage look. Not always the case these days. Now, here's Ingles. 20 points for him last game against Oklahoma City. Here's O'Neal. That one falls. Six points for him. The Hawks leading by 12. Here's Young. 22 points for him. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. It's going to be on Donovan Mitchell. Able to see the entire floor. Young gets a lane and he takes it. In his rookie season, a rough start shooting the ball for Trey Young. He came on down the stretch in a big way. And that one falls for Young. Some new records for Trey Young, the first rookie in NBA history with over 45 points and 15 assists in a game. Kevin, also the fourth rookie since the merger to post three consecutive 35 points games. The others, Anara King, Michael Jordan, and Allen Iverson. That's the company you want to be in. And that's another area where he is just a superb player. Excellent at the free throw line. Banked in off the glass. Young's got 26. With that tight handle, Trey Young can get anywhere on the court he wants to go. Count that bucket. Trying to slice into this deficit every time up the floor. Terrific quarter for him. Uses the glass to finish the layup. And he has 28 points for the game. This has been a tremendous quarter for him. Everything he puts up now looks like it's going in. Tipped away. Out of bounds. It'll go to the Hawks. Let's now take a moment to view the league's leading rebounds. Fourth, Rudy Gobert. And you can't win games without rebounding the basketball. That's what has made him such an important part of what they do. Young for three. A rebound by the Jams. Davis has got his fourth rebound in this one. Here's Moutier. Detman with the block. Oh, and a fast break for Atlanta. Whistle blows, basket is good. So a chance here for a three-point play. No hesitation. He just takes off and takes it the distance. Yeah, he's a one-man show in transition. Impressive play, taking it right to the rim. And the Hawks making a change here. Benbury's checked in. That free throw good from Reddish. And, of course, there's uh, no questioning Cam Reddish's talent. Uh, Greg, he has a high, high ceiling. 
Yeah, I mean, great size, length, the fluidity as an athlete. He can make an impact at both ends of the floor, shoots the three well for a young player, and you love his ability to match up, really, one through five. Pembry shot good. I mean, the number of points they've scored in the paint already here is eye-opening. Out to the right wing. Here's Moutier. Davis. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. And, and folks, he did not luck into that one. He knew just where he wanted to be to grab that backboard. Trey Young, he's feeling it tonight and has been the driving force for Atlanta. What an amazing quarter. There was absolutely no stopping him. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Kevin, thank you. Jeff, you guys had a great first half. Is the key to the second half to continue to be that aggressive? Yeah, we got to play defense. They're a really good team. They're going to play hard. They're real physical. We just got to come out and keep guarding. Jeff, thanks for your time. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. And we'll be right back after halftime to start the third quarter. See you in just a bit. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, welcome back to the NBA on 2K Sports. This is Ernie Johnson. Kenny the Jet Smith is right here. Say hey to the folks, Kenny. Hey, folks. Say hey to the yeah, folks, Shaq. Hey, folks. Hey, let's get this party started. Okay. We saw Trey Young lighting it up in the first half. He ended up with 28 points, two steals, and three assists. Multiple times we saw the bench cheering him on in the first two quarters of this one. Kenny, what was your take on Atlanta? More spectacular play by Trey Young. It's not just the skill set, it's the instincts of the game. Makes quick reads, and he's decisive. How about you, Shaq? What did you think about Utah? Well, they got a ton of issues to work on. Allow a way too high percentage to be shot against them. Not really showing any energy on defense. No discipline. Look at their faces, Ernie. Do they even want to be here? And that's a wrap for our halftime show. The third quarter just about to get started. We've got a second half of basketball for you. We think it's going to be pretty good. A big comeback, though, is needed for this game to be competitive, and it probably has to happen quickly. It's been one outstanding game from Trey Young. Well, we'll find out if they were able to find an, an answer for him over the break. He was scoring with ease in that first half. I think both sides probably adjusted a few things. The key for him is to bring the same level of energy over these last two quarters. And with a big gap on the scoreboard, the second half begins with very different goals for these teams. One side trying to mount a comeback, one side trying to protect their lead. So on the floor for Utah. Inside, we have Ingles and Gobert. Conley runs the point with Mitchell flanking him. And it's O'Neal in at the three spot. Smitty, you played with the U.S. national team. Would you say they allow more physicality in FIBA than they do in the NBA? No, I, I think, Kevin, different parts of the game, there's more physicality, like on the free throw line, boxing out. Uh, like going up for rebounds, they li let a lot more than we're used oh, to go. Take a break. But take usually a break. NBA players adjust, and they find their way. And he can't get the first one. And when you look at Utah, this team, year after year, seems to be more than a sum of its parts. I like that they always look for guys with big-time character, unselfish, low-drama players, and there is a confidence with this group. Good on the second free throw. So it's Utah now. It's an 18-point game. Conley kicks to Mitchell. It's rebounded by Herter. Atlanta's gone 5 of 10 from downtown tonight. 50% exactly. Young. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. And Smitty, the city of Atlanta, as you know, has really embraced Trey Young. Kevin, they call him Ice Trey. The franchise handed him the keys, and he's running with it. This is his second trip to the line in this one. Shooting two.
The first free throw is good. One of the most exciting, memorable players in college basketball history. Trey Young is incredible. Atlanta making a switch here. Hunter's checked in. And so Young nails them both. Jazz trail by 20. That's tipped. Gobert the pass to Conley. Castro O'Neal down to five on the shot clock. The Jazz need to get off a shot here. And the shot goes in from Rudy Gobert. What you see now with Gobert, he's really improved his strength, making him a better scorer in traffic. Collins passes to Herter. Gobert with the block, and he's able to get it back. The Hawks working the ball around. The three, and Herter gets it to go. Herter's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. Conley, the pass to Gobert. Dishes it to Mitchell. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. That's on Clint Capella. Really a sponge. Donovan Mitchell watches a ton of film. Accepts coaching and applies it. A big part of his rise to stardom. The first one at the line is good. And the early success of Mitchell speaks to his ability to absorb and take coaching. Yes, credit that coaching staff putting him in position to succeed, helping him also to develop. His decision making is growing game by game. And that one goes in, too, from the line that time. High character kid, well spoken. In fact, Mitchell's pre draft interviews helped him rocket up the board. Now, here is Young. He has 30. Capella with it to the left side wing. The Hawks need to get off a shot here. From deep three-point range, Herter, no good. And when you are as good a shooter as he is, you have the confidence. You have to have the confidence to take that shot. It might not always fall. You know what another option is? Just give the ball up. Let someone else make a play. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to David Aldridge. Hey, Kevin. Well, the Hawks said they were going to be patient when they rebuilt their team, and they were going to do it through the draft, and they've stuck to that script. Now, Trey Young is probably the biggest name, but Atlanta's added a lot of great young talent the last three years. There's John Collins, Kevin Herter, and in 2019, the Hawks added three more good young players in the draft. DeAndre Hunter, Cam Reddish, and Bruno Fernando. Things are looking up in Atlanta. I would think so, too. On paper, it looks good. We'll see if it materializes. D.A., thank you as always. The Hawks have shot 10 of 13 from the free throw line. Teague, he's checked in for Trey Young. The free throw drops for Hunter. An athletic forward with, with a personal skill set. Hunter has also proven he can come up big in big moments. And they call the foul, so a chance at the line for one more coming up. That'll put Joe Ingles on the line. That one on Collins. And his teammates call him old man, say he looks <laughs> like a 40-year-old farmer. But Joe Ingles, Smitty, much more than meets the eye. You know what, Kevin? He's a star in his role. He's gotten better and better. He's a guy who can impact winning on a nightly basis. Third quarter here, and three minutes have come off the clock. Teague against Conley. Poke loose. Pass to Herter. Bob pass to Capella. Hammers the alley-oop through. Oh, such a beautiful pass to set that one up. Yeah, the pass might have been pretty, but the finish was angry. <laughs> and the 
to call the foul, so he's got the and one chance here to make it a three-point play. I really like Donovan Mitchell's composure out there, leading this team by example. The Jazz have shot the ball well from the free throw line, eight of nine. The Jazz making a switch here. Clarkson's checked in. Free throw dropped for Mitchell. Wow, they've made every free throw here in the second half. Ball's knocked loose and out of bounds as Utah gains possession. This gives us the chance to view the best three-point shooting teams this season. The real stats, the real scores from the real NBA. The Jazz second. No doubt, they have snipers on that roster, that's for sure. It's been a terrific year for them from beyond the arc. And over the course of his career, Mike Conley taking on more and more of the leadership mantle. He's embraced it, Kevin. And he said letting his hair down was a way of letting go and just being confident in himself. And the first one drops. Last season, Mike Conley became the Grizzlies' all-time leader in points scored. He was already first in assists, steals, and three-pointers. And so Mike Conley nails both of them. And Smitty, when it's all said and done, Mike Conley's jersey has to go in the Memphis Raptors. Absolutely. Over a decade in a Grizzlies uniform, he helped lead them to the best years in franchise history. Here's Herder. He averages more than 12 points a game. That's some dependable production. And then Mitchell at the dunk. Quick feet, quick hands of Conley, forcing the turnover and getting them out on the brink. The Hawks leading by 14. The pass to Hunter. Nice ball movement here by Atlanta. That's tipped. Here's Fernando. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. It's going to be on Rudy Gobert. And with the offense getting right to the rim, at least they saved the layup. And that one misses. He hits the second from the line. And so Conley will bring the ball up for the Jazz. Down by 15. He kicks it to Clarkson. And that one falls, coming off Conley's feet. Conley's got six assists here tonight. Outside T. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. And a moment to check out now what Utah has coming up. On Friday, they'll be facing Drew Holiday and the New Orleans Pelicans. And then on Saturday, they'll be taking on Jonas Valanciunas and the Memphis Grizzlies. Take and break. looking at that Lakers matchup, Two shots. they can't come out playing timid. Just because they're facing the top team in the West, you've got to play your game. Minimize mistakes, and if they do that, they got a chance at the W. And so Teague hits two free throws. And as you would expect from the way he plays, Teague is a terrific free throw shooter. Conley, the pass to Gobert. Here's the dish to Clarkson. Over Hunter. A shot by Clarkson, no good. The Hawks leading by 14. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. Yeah, easy call. They call him Red Velvet. Kevin Horter, out of the University of Maryland, proved he can stripe it from day one. Oh. 
Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. No good on the free throw. And Greg Herter, the 19th pick back in 2018, sweet touch and at six foot seven, good size at the shooting guard position. And the Hawks general manager, Travis Schlink, coming from the Warriors with Trey Young and, and Kevin Herter, the Hawks hoping they have a kind of Splash Brothers East. And he sinks the second. The 19th pick in 2018 out of Maryland. Kevin Herter with the positional size and skill to adapt well to the NBA game. And, and a chance here to look at the numbers for Jeff T. He's averaging 10 points a game, five assists, and two rebounds. And he's been making the right decisions and, and letting the game come to him. Solid play all around. He's not trying to take over necessarily. He's just taking what the defense allows and contributing to the calls. And with that skill, Herter's a triple threat offensively. Not just a standstill shooter. He can function as a secondary ball handler, creating for himself and others. Clarkson finds Conley. Here's Ingles. Teague covering. Here's Conley. Good for his eighth field goal. He's attempted a dozen shots. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Edmund passes to Hunter. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. Hunter's got 12 in the game. Awesome concentration there. When Hunter's committed to scoring, he's hard to stop. Mitchell outside. Here's Clarkson. And again, it's the Jazz from deep. The ball movement on this run has been fantastic and is a big part of why they've been able to get these good looks. Herder passes to Fernando. Outside T. And they come right back with their own three-pointer. He's got 14. Both teams running perimeter-oriented plays that are working. How often do we see this these days? Clubs answering each other from range. That ball is good for another field goal. His sixth. He is six for nine on the stat sheet. And Teague is just so calm and, and collected when he gets near the rim. Mitchell outside. Puts it up from 12. The putback. Davis on the follow. And those second chance points really become almost like bonus points when you can get them. Here's Teague. Deadman trying to break free. Teague can't hit. Jazz trail by 15. Conley surveying the D. Davis up top. Five to shoot. Here's Mitchell and Utah again with the bucket. Talk about making halftime adjustments. You love what they're doing with him now offensively. Archson against T. Over Mitchell. And it's off the back rim. No good. Utah has gone two of two from long range in the third quarter so far. It's blocked. Here's Herter, and Davis sends it back. Here's Mitchell, not wasting any time and taking the shot and knocking it down. Mitchell's got 11 points here in just the second half. And now the first timeout called here for the Hawks. Steve Revenue's climbing. We're seeing some star players make 40-plus million a year. Top coaches making around 10 million a year. My goodness. You think coaches are due for a raise, though, Steve? You know, I think all parties involved, it, the numbers will keep going up, Kevin. The franchise values are going up to over a billion dollars. So I think coaches will get a raise, players will get a raise, and the guys that are playing at a high level, especially for coaches, if they're winning, their numbers will go up. George Niang is checked in for Joe Ingles. And Emmanuel Moutier subbed in for Mike Conley. Passes it to Reddish. Moutier against T. Atlanta again missing. And so it's Davis. He'll bring the ball up for the Jazz. 11-point game. 
Clarkson passes to Niang. Off the mark, had a chance to trim it to single digits. And the wide open shot from Reddish. No good from outside. Utah has gone six of eight on three pointers in the game, an outstanding 75% mark. Mitchell in the corner. No good with the triple. The Atlanta leading by 11. It's stolen by Davis. Here's Clarkson. The basket good off the assist from Moutier. Clarkson's got 12 points in the game. Some guys just understand how to generate points. He's one of them. Bembry. And he can't stop the run as he misses. Jazz trail by nine. Clarkson passes to Niang. Count it. Niang's got his second bucket. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Carter outside. Dishes it to Reddish. Got a piece of it. And now Clarkson pushing it up. No one back to stop him. That's a stomach punch, guys. Mm. Turn it over and give him a free run to the bucket. Oh, you're so right. No question who has the momentum now. But the truth is, those type of plays are going to happen. You just have to regroup mentally and get back to work. Atlanta calls timeout. And they're committing an awful lot of fouls here, and not of the good variety. You don't want to give up easy layups, sure, but it's been a nonstop parade to the foul line. in for Atlanta. Trey Young comes in for Jeff T. Gobert, he's checked in for the Jazz. O'Neal comes in for Mitchell. Here's Young, and he banks in the lane. Young's got four points in the quarter. And not quite as aggressive from outside as they were in the first half, sticking to the high percentage shots, playing smart with the lead. Now, here's Clarkson. 14 points for him. Here's Carter. Two points. That one goes. And now it's a nine-point Hawks lead. I like that. Collins playing under control, reading the floor. Nice setup there. If a floater and Clarkson with the layup. Clarkson's got 16 points. And so far, going for more of an inside presence here in the second half, getting away from the three-point shot. Here's Benbury. Gobert with the block. Here's Moutier, and Moutier throws it down. Now, that's what I call a momentum changer. Yeah, when you've got a point guard, that kind of spring, no lead is safe. You're totally right. That can be a shot in the arm for them. A spark that turned things around. Three seconds separate the shot clock and game clock. Reddish with the double team. O'Neal passes to Niang. Shot clock at five. Here's Moutier. Off target on the outside leaner. Not sure what, what the D was doing there. Clearly a breakdown. You can ill afford to give a guy like him that good a look. And offensively, a great show for the fans through the first three quarters. It's been a fun game to watch. Hawks ahead, leading by five. We'll be back shortly live from State Farm Arena. Tense quarters behind us. One more to go. Thanks for being with us as we begin the fourth. Carter out there with John Collins. And it's Young. Then it's Reddish. And it's Benbury in at the two. So that's the lineup for Atlanta. Kept alive. And slam dunk by Gobert. He has a standing reach of nine foot seven. Gobert making that play look routine. Bembry. He's covered by Clarkson. 
And now Utah, fast break. Clarkson's running. That counts. He's put up 13 shots, and he's had eight of those go in. It's really been a tale of two halves, guys. A slow start, but this quarter, he has really been the man. Pass to Young. Sinks the three-pointer. Young's got 35 in the game. Picking up from where he left off. I lost count of how many threes he hit in the first half. Now nails this one. Gobert dishes to Moutier. Looking to get back on track here. You might ask, how is Trey Young blocking shots? The awareness and the activity level. That's how. Clint Capella, he's checked in for the Hawks. And a switcher also for Utah. Ingles is checked in. Jazz trail by four. Shots good by Clarkson. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. Bounce pass Young. And we've made our way through just over a minute and a half in this fourth quarter. And as it goes out of bounds, Atlanta able to keep the ball here. Five on the clock. Here's Bembry. Pulled the shot a little up, but the bounce goes his way. And the Hawks lead by four. And coming down the stretch here, both teams still on fire. Yes, and if you love offense, you're loving this matchup. It's been a highlight reel affair. But they get it back. Poke loose. Here's Clarkson. Gobert trying to get open. No good on that one. And his pure defensive effort changed that shot from an easy one to a tough one. And you know, technically, it's a high percentage look. But this is why we play the game. And when he was drafted, there were questions, Smitty, about John Collins' best position. At 6'10", what do you think? Better as a 4 or a 5? And you know what, Kevin? A lot of people called him a tweener. The way he's developed now, it's positional versatility. Whichever spot he plays, he's holding his own. Shooting two. And that one falls for Collins. And he may not have gotten the same attention as some of the other picks back in the 2017 draft, Greg, but John Collins out of Wake Forest has been outstanding thus far in his career. Really one of the league's best kept secrets. Tremendous athleticism. Also great hands. And just has a knack for moving to the open spot around that rim. And so Collins nails both of them. It's amazing that in the 2017 draft, Collins went just 21st overall. That's a steal, folks. Now, here's Clarkson. Here's Gobert. He scores his fifth field goal. He's taken nine shots to get those five. And defensively, they are on their heels every time the ball comes inside. Collins kicks to Bembry. He dishes it to Young. He blocks it again. Uh, a defensive stalwart so far. That's six blocks. Greg protecting the rim. Love the hustle. Pass to Collins. Reddish dishes to Young. And that one drops for him. Young's got five points now this quarter. The ability of Trey Young to take it up inside makes him difficult to pressure out on the perimeter. Shots good by Clarkson. And since halftime, he has been a different player. And so it's Young who brings it up for the Atlanta Hawks. 22 is their biggest lead. Again with the block. And swatting shots away with ferocity. Uh, G.A., he is not messing around in this one. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Capella. Atlanta making some changes. Hunter comes in for Reddish. And Kevin Herter subbed in for Benbury. Utah with the ball. They trail by three. You know, it, it's tougher to get recognition in a small market like Utah, Smitty. Rudy Gobert says he has to do three times as much to draw attention. And at the same time, his focus is still on team and winning. His leadership is very important to them. One falls for 
He's a great defender. He's improved his scoring. Rudy Gobert has put a lot of work into his body and game. Both shots good from the strike. Hawks have gone three of five here in the fourth quarter. Pretty good numbers coming out of the break. Time called here. The Hawks decide to talk it over. And as fans and broadcasters, we're not permitted to hear the specifics in these huddles. No, we're left to infer from the adjustments we see on the floor. for a report from the sideline. Thank you, guys. I got a chance to listen in on what Lloyd Pierce was saying to the team. He said nobody thought we'd be in this position right now, and we are. He said he was proud of his guys, but he also said, now go finish this thing off and get this win. Kevin? The offensive rebound. That one falls through. It's his sixth make from the floor this game. Now six for ten. The Hawks trailing. Young passes to Capella. Here's Collins, puts the fade away right on the money. Nice, smooth strokes. John Collins has improved his confidence from mid-range. Inside. Here's Gobert. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. That's on Clint Capella. So I tell you what, he earned his money on that foul. throw drops for Gobert. The Jazz making a switch here. Mitchell's checked in. So he hits one of two from the strike. He wanted to get his team the lead and even though he didn't he should feel good. At least he tied it up. Outside Cowan. Capella kicks to Collins. Nice ball movement here by Atlanta. It's good. 14 points for Clint Capella. The yeah, heads up aggressive play right there. Saw the smaller man on him and took it straight to the bench. Mitchell dishes to Gobert. Tipped away. Now the pass to O'Neal. Feeds it to Gobert. And foul on the shot. So he'll get a chance at the line. And so he's picked up his final foul. He will sit for the rest of this game. Hawks making a switch here. Edmonds checked in. The first one falls. Tough. He's just so hard to keep off the foul line when he pushes the action. I love his activity here in the second half. misses. Amazing story for Dwayne Detman. Didn't play organized basketball until he was 18. Undrafted out of USC, but his talent has won out. And it's Conley with the ball for Utah. It's a one-point game. Rejected by Young. And again, it's Atlanta. And he may have picked up the game late, but Deadman is making up for lost time. What I like, he's improved his hands and decision making. Even added a three point shot in the last couple of years. You can tell he's putting the work in.
That's good from Conley. He's an ultra-quick lefty with a great feel for how to run a team. Mike Conley is a tremendous asset for this franchise. Now, here's Dedman. And here's Young from the arc. Rebound, Utah. Gobert's got his 18th rebound here tonight all over the place. Here's Hunter. A rebound by the Jams. Floats one. Conley gets the bucket. Conley's got five points in the quarter. That shot, Conley has perfected it. The little teardrop. Young pass to Herter. Now Hunter. And out of bounds as the Jazz gain possession. Boy, if you're the coach, you hate to see that kind of miscommunication between your guys. Utah's gone 7 of 11 from deep tonight, using the three-pointer to their advantage. Here's O'Neal, and Capella sends it back. Puts it up from 12. They get the rebound. And there's two points. Working on the glass, paying off that time. Young's got 41. And the Jazz call time here. There's a built-in respect for coaches who played in the NBA. The Jazz, Quinn Snyder, never made it that far. But as a point guard, he helped Duke make three Final Four appearances. chance to present our Jordan player of the game, Rudy Gobert. And guys, it's been a rugged brand of defense he's played. Uh, I don't know why they keep taking the ball at him. It. It, it seems like every time they have, he's come up with the rejection. And with every block, he's only gotten more and more fired up. Now here is Conley, poked away. Mitchell outside, six to shoot. And that one falls, coming off Conley's feet. Conley's got assist number eight here in this one already. Passes it to Hunter. Now, here's Dedman. Bob pass to Capella. Oh, and just a soft touch on both ends of that pretty alley. I gotta say, when he threw the pass, I didn't know where it was going. Utah has gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. At the elbow, it's Gobert. He lobs up the alley -oop pass and finished off by Conley. Calling his own number all night long. Conley can beat you in a variety of ways. Here's Young in Atlanta again with the bucket. Rising to the occasion. He found a way to get himself open and get his shot. Working the mid-range, but you would think the defense would be keying on him. Now, here's Mitchell. Basket counts. Really starting to attack on the interior here, showing a much more physical presence here in the second half. Free throw drops for Mitchell. The Hawks trail by three. Young passes to Hunter. Now Dedman kicks to Young. To the middle, Capella. And he takes it in for the layup off a very nice feed. Such an incredible score. Young's playmaking may be on the same level. Conley finds Mitchell. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. And he knocks down the first one. Vince Carter, he's checked in for Dwayne Dedman. And 
Mitchell drops them both. And so it's Young who brings it up for the Hawks. Capella kicks to Young. Back to Capella. Nice ball movement here by Atlanta. Here's Hunter. Again, the Hawks score. Well, we saw this from Hunter in the tournament. When Virginia won the championship, he was a clutch performer. Conley dishes to Mitchell. Baseline jumper, and he knocks down the jumper. Mitchell's got 23. Donovan Mitchell's ready, and he knocked down one of the bigger shots of this game. Back to Herter. Count the basket and the foul. It's going to be on Donovan Mitchell. And that's about the worst defense I can imagine a team playing coming down the stretch. And I love the play call. This is where you get the ball into the hands of your closers, where they can do something with it. One shot. And that one misses. Utah leading. 153 left to play here in the fourth. It's going to be out of bounds. The Jazz will retain possession. Reddish, he's checked in for Atlanta. Here's Conley. Count the bucket. And he's got a free throw coming up as well. With the game's momentum up for grabs, Conley values being the guy to take the crucial shot. Just a remarkable score in these situations. Yeah, big play on the front end to finish, despite getting hacked there, and big on the back end to hit the free throw. Young against Hunt. Stolen by O'Neal. And now Utah, fast break. And here's Ingles outside. And the Jazz, another three. You see the practice time Ingles has put in. Completely in rhythm. No problem with that shot. And Young kicks to Hunter. Tried to answer back, but that three is off the mark. Utah leading by seven. Past O'Neal. Mitchell outside. And he converts the layup. Mitchell's got 11 points in the quarter. Mitchell doing a good job. In order to have a chance in this league, you've got to be able to score. He's done that tonight. Yeah, just not on the same page. Unfortunate, wasted possession. Atlanta making a switch here. Embry's checked in. Finally, the pass to Gobert. Gobert, double team. Out to Conley. A three. And the Jazz, another three. Inspired tonight. They fought hard and at crucial points just made the plays. Especially during this last run, which ultimately put the game away. Both teams running perimeter-oriented plays that are working. How often do we see this these days? Clubs answering each other from range. And O'Neal gets it to go. They just blocked out the noise, kept on grinding, and this is their reward. And guess what? It's going to be a fun flight home. Total team effort. Big win on the road. The defender was pretty much helpless right there. His man had a clear height advantage, and he got the exact kind of shot he wanted. So we see the Jazz get the win here. And in the win, a comfortable win in what was, I think, gee, a pretty hostile environment. It, it really was. You, you know, it's never going to be easy on the road, but they didn't have too many problems with that tonight. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Mike, you guys really came on in the second half. What changed? We just started playing basketball again. I, I told the guys at halftime that we can't just turn it on and off. We got to be able to keep the pedal to the metal. And uh, guys came out and defensively uh, focused, and guys are making the double uh, extra plays to get defensive stops. Well, defense is obviously your team's calling card. Congrats on the win. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David. Great job. Thanks so much. And that'll do it, folks. For Steve Smith, Craig Anthony, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for tuning in. So long, everyone.